Good morning, gang. It's Saturday, the 25th of April, 2015. A warm welcome along to this morning's United Kingdom talk coming to you live from the Mirable Studios in Royal Berkshire today. And as a little experiment today, also on Periscope. You're wondering what that is, aren't you? Periscope. Oh, it's this wonderful, wonderful new little app that I've found, boys and girls. We love Periscope. We love Periscope. I'll tell you about it a little bit later on. Uh, I'm afraid the weather's collapsed a little bit here today. There's not much sun out. It's been such a beautiful week. Uh, I met two people last night at a karaoke I was doing in uh, King's Cross, Central Station in King's Cross. Uh, one of them was Chris and the other one was... Begins with M. Malcolm? Not Malcolm. Anyway, uh, so I met these two people at the karaoke last night. And uh, Chris came up to us. I've never met him before. And he said, thank you very much for doing the shows on the Black Cap last week. He said, um, it was, I really, really enjoyed it, found it very informative and entertaining. Uh, and it's so nice. And a couple of people have, uh, uh, a few people actually have come up about, let me tell you, one, two, three, about four people have come up to me in various different places last week um, after we did the two Black Cap shows and said similar things. And you know what? When uh, That show last Saturday you, sh you saw was the most work-intensive um, radio YouTube show that I've ever done. I actually spent an awful lot of time on that, about five hours on the Friday. And it's always... You, you, you don't really know it's going to work until you do it. Do you know what I mean? And so I was really, really pleased. And it's so nice when someone comes up to you after you've done so much work and says, yes, we liked it or yes, we appreciated it. So much thanks to, I think his name was Chris North. Chris North, he, was sing he did a little bit of singing. The first time I've ever seen him sing at the karaoke last night. Uh, although he did back down when he was about to do Can You Feel the Love Tonight? You know that one from The Lion King? Can you feel the love tonight? Oh, I love it. I love, we love Disney. We love Disney. So that was last night. Um, good morning to Terry H, who says, Blimey, you look smart, smart this morning. Finally making an effort. Yes, I've decided, Terry, in future to make an effort at all times while doing our long talk shows. And I have my, my red blaze. Oh, there's a tie here as well. Do you know, can I tell you what this is from? Look, my tie in my pocket, look. Now, does that look like a school tie? It does, doesn't it? OK, so a couple of the uh, th this is this blazer is actually about four years old, four or five years old now. And um, we were doing a school disco at Belushi's in Hammersmith, where I used to work for a number of years. I had a wonderful time there. And we did a school disco there once. And me and the manager, little Rob, his name was uh, Rob Jones. We got on very well there. And if we were doing something, we'd, we'd go the whole the whole mile. Do you know what I mean? So I went out and bought a tie and a, 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 a blazer, and that's what I've got on today. I think it's quite nice, don't you? Unfortunately, it won't quite do... It won't quite do... We, we'll do up. But, it, but look, if I do this up... I'm, no, it doesn't... No, 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 dear, no. It, it's unfortunately a little bit fat to do the thing up at the moment. But, yeah, it, it kind of fits, doesn't it? Just about. And I have, I'm pleased to say... Lost a couple of pounds in weight this week because, unfortunately, we've gone up to 12 stone. Uh, was it 12? What's half of it? It's 12, half, uh, 12, seven, just a minute. Just doing mental arithmetic in my head while we're doing this. 12 stone, seven pounds. Is it 12 stone, seven pounds? Is that half a stone? No, it's 12. I it went up to 12 stone, eight pounds. Um, now back to 12 stone, six pounds. And that's since Monday. So I'm quite pleased about that. And it's the old case. And I've said this time and time again. You know, once you get on that. I don't want to call it a diet, really. Once you got. Um, <laughs> just a minute, Terry. <laughs> once you've gone on that diet, it does become easier. You know, it's it's getting to it. That's the problem. You get to the day and you think, OK, I'm going to start today. And then you're on your way. Oh, you know, one bag of crisps doesn't hurt. You know, and then you buy that bag and then, then you're off it again. 
aren't you? It's it's staying on it for a few days and then it does become much easier. So I think it was Monday. I decided, right, let's have another go. And I went through the day with no crisps and chocolates and things. And then Tuesday and then it just flowed. And here I am Friday, five days later, and I've stuck to it. I've also dumped the uh, bran flakes in the morning because I don't think they're made out of bran. I think they're made out of wheat bran flakes, a lot of them. Maybe I should read the labels or there's wheat in it. And I, I, I just... I don't know. I think I might have a little bit of a wheat intolerance. I've looked this up on the Internet because there's wheat in so much stuff now, isn't there? You know, whatever you pick up, you know, you see wheat in there somewhere. Um, and I think that might be a problem as well. So I've knocked out the well, I, I managed to stay off the bread since January. Now and again, I've had a little roll here or a slice here. You know, maybe you're out in a restaurant or something and, you know, you order that delicious tomato. Well, it depends where you are. Delicious tomato soup. You know, uh, the the tomato soup in pizza chain Frankie and Benny's is really nice. I mean, it, I mean, it really is. Oh, hang on a minute, I've got the wrong sound selected here, haven't I? Just a second. I think I'm I'm coming off. I haven't got your your high quality sound set. One minute, I can do that as as we're doing the show. Let's try it. See if that makes any difference to your sound. I bet it won't make any difference at all at this point. It's mainly for music. Anyway, we'll we'll, we'll do that for you. There we are. See if that works now. Um, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yes. The tomato soup in Frankie and Benny's is very nice and various other places. And it always comes with a bread roll or those little... What are those crusty things? Oh, croutons. Croutons. Another import from France that we didn't need. You know? I mean, I'm quite happy with a couple of slices of bread or a bread roll. We don't need to have croutons shoved all on the top of our tomato soup so it's very nice in frankie and Benny's. although me and my best friend ron we went to this pub once uh, which is quite near his house uh he lives in hard to let properties uh, just up the road from me oh christ i mean i mean you know it's it's that sort of place where you park your car and you wonder if your wheels are still on there at the end of it you really do you know or there might be a long scratch alongside it or something like that it i mean that's if it's still there I prefer to, he's, he always wonders why I walk up there rather than taking the car. And the reason is, you know, I want the car to still be there at the end of my visit. So I don't take it. You know, I leave that locked away in my garage. Although I could leave it. I mean, where I live, here in Royal Berkshire, in the Hanworth area, we, can, we generally don't lock our doors around here. I leave the car out for, 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 for months on end sometimes. I don't bother putting it in. I leave the garage door open. I leave all the doors open and windows unlocked and nothing happens. Whereas where Ron lives, very dangerous, dear. Dangerous. Oh, yeah. Murderers, drug addicts. Oh, awful place. Awful. Awful. Please don't ever go there if he invites you. Uh, Terry says it looks like a school blazer. Well, it is a school blazer. He says, bet you have got grey trackies underneath. What do you reckon, have I? Are you suggesting, Terry, that I only put this on so as the bit that you can see? Now, of course, people that are listening to this show only, there's plenty of people that just listen, won't, won't, won't be able to see that anyway, so it doesn't matter. But are you suggesting I don't put the whole thing on? Would you like me to stand on the chair and show you? Is that what you want, lovey? OK. <laughs> Correct, Terry. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yes, dear. Tra Grey track suit bottoms on underneath. You're absolutely right. Well, what's the point in doing the bottom bit as well? You can't see that. I'm not going to. I'm not walking around the studio like those people on Sky News. What, what is all that about? That does annoy me. I don't, I, really, I don't watch Sky News, News much. I can't stand that woman, Kay Burley. Oh, she's full of it, that one, isn't she? Kay Burley. What an uninteresting person with absolutely no sensitivity whatsoever. She's just awful. And who's the fat bloke that sits there as well? Adam Bolton. I can't bear the Sky News presenters. Awful. But one of, one of the things they do, why do they keep wandering around the studio, dear? Sit down and tell us the bloody news. They keep wandering around the studio. And they've got this thing at the back. 
which I suppose is like, is like some sort of giant. Well, hang on a minute. Am I over over sending you too much signal there? Is that better? Sorry, I think I was I think I was sending you too much signal. And they they got this big screen on it, and they touch it and pull things apart and touch it and move this. And they've started doing it on the BBC now as well. With the election coverage, he's got this little, little like Pentagon thing in it. I thought it was something to do with witchcraft. You know, Pentagon thing. No, not Pentagon. Hexagon. <laughs> well, is that the same thing? A hexagon, a Pentagon? I don't know. They all look the same to me, dear. Is that a racist? Is that being racist saying that? You know, that Pentagons and Hexagons all look the same to me. Am I about to be reported to Ofcom for racism against Pentagons? You just don't know anymore. People are so offended. Oh, I'm offended. Oh, I'm offended. Oh, I'm offended. Oh, go away. Go and be offended on your own. We're not interested, dear. I can't remember the last time I was offended. I think it was when I was shortchanged three pence in wait. In, in, not not in Waitrose. Never, never in Waitrose have I ever ever been shortchanged here. No, only in Sainsbury's. Thank you. Which is quite a regular occurrence to me. It's not really. But the last time I was offended, I was shortchanged. Shortchanged, boys and girls, possibly by one of my employers. Accidentally. They always say, oh, I'm sorry, Chris, we didn't mean that. And you know that five has gone in their back pocket. Thieving bastards, all of them. Anyway, back to the sky and, and BBC News. And he's got this little pen, not, not pentagon, hexagon thing in the corner. And he touches it and pulls it across. And the Conservatives go up and the Labour goes up and the UKIP go up and the Lib Dems go up. And did SDB go down? I don't know why that is. <laughs> I adjust, of course. No, and, the, and and all these different colours. Of it. And I'm thinking, why are you touching this big bloody screen at the back? Just leave it alone. You know, I bet it doesn't even do anything. I bet you it doesn't even do anything. I bet you he's pushing that button and there's a bloke in the tele television gallery that's pushing buttons and things like that. And he's the man who's making things change. On the screens. What do you reckon? <laughs> so we don't watch Sky News. We like News 24. Uh, Terry says, um, I know you too well. <laughs> yes, the, yes, the grey track is R indeed on. Good morning to Anonymous, who says, Hello, Chris. What are you waffling on about today? Well, haven't you been listening? You just Surely you don't want me to go over the whole show again with you, do you? And repeat everything that I've just said. God's sake, we can go on and on. Now, uh, let me see. Uh, have you got any messages coming? Here's something I would like you to talk about today. Um, because I've seen an advert, a commercial this morning, on about McDonald's. It was a McDonald's advert. And basically, this man and a woman are standing... In at the front, uh, this man is this uh, standing at a, a what do you call it now, a check-in desk, waiting to go on a plane. Okay, and they get to the checkout desk. I've just got someone on hold on the line. Thank you for calling. I've got you on hold at the moment. I'll be with you in a second. And I get to the front of this queue, and the bloke starts taking his clothes off. And, of course, the woman's next to him trying to talk to the check-in girl. And she's... Look, they're looking at each other, then kind of looking at him at the side of their eyes. Anyway, carries on taking his clothes off. And they can't understand why he's doing it. And then, and then it, the, 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 the camera cuts to the scales. You know where you put your suitcase on? And it's gradually going up 14 kilos, 14 and a half kilos, 15 kilos. And then he stops... Right. He's now standing there, I think, in a vest <coughs> and a pair of boxer shorts. And he waves at the woman and goes on his way. And of course, what he's doing is getting his money's worth with the pathetic 15 kilograms of weight that you're now allowed on these awful budget airlines that I won't travel on. Uh, EasyJet and Ryanair, you know, like cattle class. Awful. Don't even travel on those ever, please. You know, save up the money and go with a normal airline. Please do that, because you, you won't like it going on those Ryan airplanes. I did it once, never, ever again. Oh, God's sake. It's like being in the back of a cattle thing, waiting to be slaughtered, dear. Well, I think some people are on the plane. You know, do you want to buy a cup of tea? Five pounds, please. No, 
they cut your head off. And that's it. Awful. So don't go on those. And what he's doing is getting his money's worth. You see? He wants to put 15 kilograms of cloves in. So my question to do uh, to you today is, how do you get your money's worth? Tips on getting your money's worth. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, good morning. Who's calling in on line one? It's your best friend, Ron. Oh, good morning, best friend, Ron. And how are you today? I think I'm over-modulating myself today. I think there's too much... Too much. Is it, was it sounding at all... Um, what's the word? I think it's too much periscope. Periscope. We love periscope. We'll talk about that later. Periscope, yes. Yes, I think, I think too much periscope. Have you got any um, uh, ways to get your money's worth? Now, you're a voucher person, aren't you? No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I've seen your hand over vouchers for this, that and the other, no, do you? No, 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 no. What I do is when I'm shopping online, I look for vouchers. Yes. So if I'm shopping online, let's say, um, I don't know, John Lewis or um, Harvey Nichols or somewhere, what you do is you type in voucher codes for, that, for, that, um, for, for the store that you're shopping for and it might bring up free delivery or 10 or 20% off. And when is, when is the last yeah. time you went on Harvey Nichols? I'm just going to shut this Periscope. I think everyone who was watching on Periscope has now gone on to the other thing, <laughs> has now gone on to YouTube. So let me just close that down. That's it. Yes. So when's the last time you went to Blimmin' Harvey Nichols then? Uh, I was shopping online Harvey Nichols quite recently, actually, when I bought Aftershave. Aftershave? Yes. Oh. Oh, I didn't know you were doing any shopping there. Yeah, I shop, I shop all over the place. Do I get things delivered, don't I? Oh, yes. Well, we like, we like to live here. My favourite is the Amazon one-click ordering. I love Amazon one-click ordering. Mm. Now, uh, now, now you have made a mistake. It oh. Hello? Is a pentagon. The little thing on the screen, it is a pentagon. It's not a hexagon, it's a pentagon. A hexagon has eight sides and a pentagon has five sides. And that has five sides. So that's your, that was just, just a correction on your... But it, no, isn't a, isn't a... I might have correct you all the time. Isn't a pentagon one of those stars well, you that you, you, you pray um, to um, spirits and things like that or bad... I don't know. Pentagon. No. Have you looked it up? Uh, no, no, because if you, if you, if, uh, the Pentagon is also a building in America where they do, same as our MI5 is where the Pentagon, there's Pentagon and it's in the shape of a Pentagon which has five sides. Right. A Pentagon is also a type of star, yes, that, um, uh, just a minute, people, hexagon. Which, which people, which, which, pe which witches and people kind of witches. pray to. Whereas the Star of David has... Now, now just a moment, just a minute. It is a hexagon. I'm looking at it. That's the shape that I see on BBC News 24, a hexagon. Does it have eight sides? One, two, three, four, five, six. The hexagon has got six sides. No, the hexagon has got eight sides. No, it's not. Look it up now. There's, there's pictures on the, the Google. I'm looking at it. Oh. Hexagon. Hang on a minute. Pentagon... Has One five. moment, please. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's, it's not a pentagon we see on that News 24, is it? Oh, it is. It's got five sides. No, it hasn't. Hang on. Maybe I can look it up. BBC News. BBC News. I don't know. Hexagon? No. no what I would put in is BBC News um, political screen. Yes. BBC News. OK, well, let's have a look. It's, it's, I know it's a hexagon. Oh, it comes up. Look, BBC News hexagon. UK politics we want, don't we, dear? Uh, oh, election two thousand. OK, there it is. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a six. hexagon. Ah, so we're both wrong. Hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, hexagon have got six sides. No, hexagons have got six. Eight sides. No, they haven't. Look it up. Have you got your little laptop there, dear? Oh, I'm sure I was right anyway. No, you're not right. Just accept the matter. fact that you're not right, dear. A hexagon. One, matter. two, oh, uh, three. It's an octagon, which has got eight sides. Thank Sorry. you. You may now apologise to the millions of people that you, are tuned into this live. But, pardon? You've got about three viewers. There's, doesn't matter, dear. You've lied to three people. I didn't lie. What have you done? I made then? a very small 
mistake. Thank you. You've made a mistake. Would you please... I've, no, I've got that on recording. You don't need to say that again. And I shall play that to you every single time now that, that we have a disagreement and you're, you're made a oh, mistake. Oh, please be quiet. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. I'm right again. I'm right, right, right all the time. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad you changed your top, dear. Having porridge down your green top that you was going to wear wasn't very pretty. No, it was nice. Do you like the the, the black? Do you like the maroon blazer? Yes, it's all right. I, I think, think this is quite nice. Boy. I think I could wear this. Yeah. yeah, Wendy's just popped up, and she says an octagon has eight sides. It was yeah. her birthday last week. Do you know Wendy? She's a fan of. Uh, yeah, I, it's my birthday next Thursday. I know. I know. You've mentioned this several times now, dear, several times. Thank you too, as that woman said yesterday in the hairdressers. Oh, Christ. Yeah, we was in the hairdressers yesterday, boys and girls, and uh, Ronnie decided to ask this woman for some no, no, unexplained... No no, 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 tell the proper story, dear. Tell the proper story. Oh, what's, what's the proper story? The proper story was, um, uh, again, about us disagreeing, and uh, you said one of the things that we disagree on is that I think I look young and you think that I don't. So I asked the woman sitting next to me how old she thought I was. And she said, oh, about 32, when I'm actually a little bit older than that. Yes. Just a tad. And she, she said, I think she said I looked about 42, didn't she, as well? Yeah, but she was just being kind. You could see that in her face. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. Now, yeah, give me an example of how you like to get your money's worth out of whatever that whatever that is. Well, okay. So if you are, if you have a contractual agreement with somebody, i.e., shopping or or um, deliveries, or if something's not right, then they, if you, if it was the other way round, they would be the first ones to jump on the bandwagon and send you a letter, which would cost you fifteen pounds or something for them to send you a letter and all of that. So if something's not right on your side, you are well within your rights to get your money's worth. Well within your rights to get your money's worth. If something's you, right, don't get me wrong. If you, you are. If, if, if something's right, okay. So you buy something, okay? You buy, let's say you buy a pair of jeans. Right. And they, uh, they get delivered and um, they're, they're damaged. Right. Okay. So the contractual, the contractual agreement between you and the person that sent you the jeans is that they would send you a brand new pair that are undamaged. You get in touch with them, and obviously they replace it. They should also replace the refund for the postage, or the postage, because a lot of them try to get out of that. Ah, I see where you're coming from there. So that's how you would get your money's worth. You are, are, are demanding that they pay the postage as well. Yeah, yeah, you are, you are, you are asking, you are asking, you are making sure that you are not out of pocket because of what of of of, of them being um, uh, uh, trying not to pay the postage, which would obviously cost them more money, and that way they'd make less money. Also, um, it's the same as the delivery companies. If a if a company chooses to use a delivery company, i.e., Yodel, which are rubbish, and that that package doesn't turn up or it's damage, which a lot of the time it is, you are well within your rights to be compensated for that, um, as well as to be reimbursed for the item. That's also getting your money's worth. Also, comparison sites. That's another way. Like cat food, for instance. My cats like expensive cat food, nearly five pounds a box. Oh, Whereas please, you never pay five pounds a box. You look for four, the offers, dear. Between 4 49 and four ninety nine, those boxes of cat food are. Yes, I know. But we don't pay that, do we, dear? No. So what, what I do is I, I have a little look online to see who's doing the deals. And at the moment, um, I think it's Pets at Home are doing three for nine pounds. They were flying out the door, weren't they, dear? They was Mind you, that's, that's not the best offer we've had. We got two ninety seven, didn't we? Yeah, as to the other week. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's on a box of cat food that usually costs four pounds fifty. We found it for two ninety seven. Well, we filled up ten trolleys each, dear. Yeah. You know, I'm having it. I'm gonna actually run. I'm actually gonna have an extension built just to store cat food. Well, I think you should start eating it. It'll save you a lot of money as well. And possibly and toilet. Really. And possibly toilet rolls as well. Oh, but you don't really buy toilet rolls, do you? Uh, yeah. I don't think we need to go there, dear. 
We don't you need to go there them. about my theft of toilet you rolls. Borrow, you borrow them from me. <laughs> you, you, you come round and steal them. <laughs> do I do I read out that message from Wendy? Maybe not, darling. Have you wished have a happy birthday to Wendy? Happy birthday, Wendy, for last Wednesday. There we are. Thank you for calling in, dear. It's been an absolute pleasure. And you're driving me tonight, aren't you? You're driving me tonight to Coventry. No, I'm not. Eh? I'm not. We'll discuss it after. Remember, I have a bad back. Oh. I am I driving on my own again? We'll speak <sighs> about it after. Dear. So disappointed. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cheerio. There's uh, Bye-bye. Ron on the line from Bracknell, the hard-to-let property area, just up the road there. Now, you can call in if you want to. I've got a Skype in. My Skype username is all one word, United Kingdom Talk, OK? United Kingdom Talk, Skype username. And there's a phone-in number as well, 20 3477 Otero 3477 A line is free. You can call in now, gang. And we want your ideas on not getting your money's worth. Or how do you get your money's worth? A few more examples here. Uh, oh, Wendy says thank you for singing to her, OK? Um, uh, yes, so this bloke takes off his clothes. Oh, dear. Just a second. Oh, no, no. Why do people text while I'm doing this programme? Turn it off, dear. That's it. Turn the blooming phone off. One second. There we are. That's done. Yeah, uh, so that bloke was taking his clothes off and standing there so he could get his 15 kilos worth of luggage. Here's some other things that I wrote down. Um, Examples of getting your money's worth. Supermarket vouchers. Perhaps you're one of those people, you know, that spends part of each day cutting around those little supermarket adverts. Do you do that? Save 2p off here, 3p there. My mum used to do it all the time, all the time. She'd go in the supermarket, she'd have her trolley. And of course, you know, I mean, there's nothing worse, to be honest, than standing behind someone who, who's handing over um, uh, supermarket vouchers, is there? There really isn't. Perhaps Wayne Anonymous is another one of those people that hands over shopping vouchers. All the way in America, this is Wayne. Good evening, sir. I didn't call in to have my reputation be smirched. What are you <laughs> doing? What with shopping vouchers? Are you not one of those people who, who, who cuts out the vouchers for, you know, uh, bush baked beans or something like that? Oh, how 18th century is that? No one cuts out coupons anymore. What do you do? Oh, you flash it on your mobile phone, do you? Um, no, it's a slightly different. I don't have a smartphone. All right, yes. All my telephone has is, is buttons. That's it. Okay. But what I do is uh, I, I have a loyalty card from the particular business that I patronize. Yeah. And they have an electronic, like a shopping circular flyer kind of a thing that comes around yes and all i have all i have to do is tick off the items that i'm interested in and when i go to do my shopping my loyalty card already knows that (laughs) and when i go to check out and they use my loyalty card anything that i have a electronic coupon coupon for is automatically deducted so i i I don't i don't want all this paper cluttering my life it all sounds very complicated to me wayne all this business going on like that No wonder Ronnie made you walk to work tonight. It's a long way to walk to Coventry. It's 99 miles from here. I'll better start now. I'm, I'm, I'm very disappointed in the fact that I missed seeing you, you know, dribble your breakfast down the front of your (laughs) shirt. (laughs) Well, I've discovered this new app. I don't know if you know about it yet. Periscope. Have you found that one? I haven't been there yet. I've, I've seen people talk about it and seen some examples of it, but I've been very leery about going anywhere. My my, my mobile telephone doesn't do apps, okay? So they right. don't do oh, me right. any good. Okay. Um, you got an old, some, old one, have you? I'm I'm so cheap I squeak when I walk. Oh, you don't, I don't believe that for one moment, Wayne. My my telephone has got to be at least... Four years old now? Yeah, but you spend your money on other things. Example, this Skype call to you. I know you're not talking on one of those $1 microphones, are you? Stand by for news. <laughs> uh, 
whatever gave you that impression. <laughs> because the quality is so good. <laughs> well, that's that's because one of the few things I'm not cheap with, is I actually pay Skype a certain number of dollars every three months. All right. And because I do that, I get preferential treatment for one you, of them. No, you don't. No, you don't. That's a good microphone you're using. No, no it makes a difference. It really does. What, what is that that you pay them? What's that called? I'm going to write this down. Uh, well, I have I have an assigned Skype telephone number. Yeah, I have one of those. That's what you. That's what people call them. And and by us paying for those assigned Skype numbers, unbeknownst to the pedestrians who are oh, right. too cheap to pay Skype anything, when it's time to line up in the queue to use their services, we get, shall we say, better connection quality. Well, I didn't know that. So by me, because I, you know, you know my phone in number, the London phone in number, that is actually a Skype number. So I, I pay annually. I think something like, be something like about seventy or eighty dollars. It's not that expensive actually, and I've got a Skype in number, which is the O two O eight one double four three four double seven number. Are you telling me by having that, I've got a better quality service than other people? I didn't know that. Um, I'm almost positive of that. They, oh, they've right. never really come out and admitted it. Okay. But if you compare our sound quality to other people's, because I've heard some Skype telephone connections that are, uh, hello, hello, oh, hello, yeah. Can, yeah. can you hear me now? Yeah, I, I, I know that the BBC use Skype. Um, there's a guy who's on, he's not on every week, but sometimes he's on on a Wednesday night on BBC Radio 5 Live. And he's a technology guy called uh, Fevzy, Fevzy. And often when he's doing the, you know, the interview, if the if the the presenter speaks at the same time, then because uh, 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 Skype is actually generally a one way thing, isn't it? It only works one way at a time, doesn't it? Yes, it's best if you both don't try to talk at the same time because yeah. then, then you have a head on collision through the technology, so to speak. Yes. So. So I've noticed the BBC do use that quite a lot as well. And at the end of the day, it's a lot cheaper than... Um, oh, what was, that, what was that thing? You know when you have a line going to someone else and you pay a lot of money from... What's that called? Oh, that's a direct uh, uh, dedicated line. They, they got a fancy name for that. It's a, They have a designation yeah. for it. Those things are outrageously expensive. I can't remember, but I think, I think a lot of people have dropped those. Certainly the smaller radio stations now. They can't afford to pay that amount of money for, for such things. No. Well, it, back when uh, Art Bell was doing the Coast to Coast radio program from his studios in the high desert of Nevada, yeah, uh, that's how he connected with uh, the network's studios in uh, California, mm. was through that. And they had a two-way street set up, so he would have access to the callers that called in. And Right. IS, that was it. ISDN. That was it. ISDN. ISDN, that's what we used to call that, the, where you got the, um, the, you know, the the dedicated line. Can't remember what it stands for, ISDN. Yeah, it, it, it has another another meaning yes. to it. So yeah. A fool and his money shall soon be parted. Yes. <laughs> Have you got any other money-saving ideas for us? How do you get your money's worth, Wayne? Uh, I'm very careful about... I do a lot of research before I buy anything. Mm. Um, and I discovered that I could get a, you know, 55-inch Gold Star TV set that some customer was dissatisfied with for a substantial savings. Yes. And, um, you know, yeah, there was one tiny scratch in the corner and the case had a little, you know, dent in the plastic. I don't care. No, me neither. Me neither. I, I mean, for three hundred dollars versus what do they want? Eight hundred or more? I mean, you know, that's a no-brainer. Just a small dent. I, you know, I'm, I've had more than one small dent in the course of my life. Uh, <laughs> it wouldn't <laughs> worry me either. Look, I've got some other bits here. Um, you know, if you buy like one of those ready meals or something like that. Um, I'm once it's gone in the oven or perhaps the microwave or something like that, I scrape out every last little bit of food with a knife or a spoon. Well, I wouldn't expect anything less. I do the same thing. Yeah. I, mean, I 
I make most of my meals from scratch because I don't mind cooking. I have a, a stove top slow cooker baker oven kind of a thing that sits on top of my old electric yeah. stove oven whatever. And that's where I do the majority of my cooking. I made a huge beef stew a few days ago and, and passed some of it off to my sister and so that you know she could have it because after raising five children she informed me yes. that her days of shopping and cooking were done yeah it lasts a long time doesn't it so, so she calls me up you know once a week and goes can you add a few things to your shopping list and I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay, just coffee, uh, candy bars uh, this that one thing and another and oh yeah check the check the stovers and uh, some of the other companies to see yes. if they got any sales on you know the, the frozen dinners oh or whatever. yeah and I'm like, oh. Uh, well, my, I, I, I was. I, I had a couple of things the other day. It was these two plastic things. We put them in the oven. And uh, Ron sometimes takes over for, for the cooking, which is cool, which is fine. And I, I, he said, dinner's ready. And I picked up my plate and I noticed, I noticed that he'd left an awful, you know, bits of food all around the side of this plastic tray. And I said, well, we're paying for this. You know, you're paying to chuck that away. And he was saying, you know, I was being a little bit, um, you know, over enthusiastic with getting the rest of the food out. I'm not chucking food away in a bin. I've just paid for it, like to get my money's worth. Well, not only that, but those trays are have to be recycled. Exactly. Oh, they do get and, recycled. Yeah. They I, do I, get I, recycled. I, I wash I wash mine out in the in the sink with soap and water yeah. so that they're squeaky clean because yeah. I don't want to be attracting varmints to my recycle bin. Well, I think we're very similar. You know, I only just replaced a carpet, I think last year it was. Now, I had this red carpet going up the stairs and in the hallway, and he, oh, he used to come up and he said, when are you getting a new carpet? It's threadbare. You know, it had moved, fair enough, you know, it had moved a little bit away from the walls, perhaps. You know, with its age, it had shrunk a bit. But I think there was years of wear left in that, with that, Wayne. Years of wear left. I mean, it's too much on this thing of chucking stuff out, you know, without any thought of it, perhaps it could be repaired or something like that. No, 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 chuck it away and get a new one. I'm sorry, I can't live like that. Can you? Um, the carpeting in, in this house was worn out, and, and uh, I took a look at it and what it was going to cost to replace it, and I simply removed the carpeting and... And I, I knew what was underneath it. They were hardwood floors. Yeah. So, yeah, the floors need to be sanded and, you know, spiffed up and whatnot. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't care. Um, I, I need your advice on something that I, I need to find out if what I'm doing is socially responsible or financially disastrous. So Go I on. Run, Go I have on. to run a plan past you. Yes, please do. Does okay. it involve me sending you any money at all? Uh, only if you want to. Okay, carry on. <laughs> uh, it just make sure if you do that you use one of those uh, wire transfer things like the Nigerians favor. What are they? <laughs> uh, so anyhow, uh, where I live is, is an older section of our town. And uh, yes. at the time I moved, moved here to take care of my mother, there were some people on the street who were um, 100 or more in age and they were still living on their own and doing quite well yeah yeah, um, yeah. a couple of them have passed on to their final rewards and you know some younger folks have moved in to replace them but there are still a lot of pensioners you know elderly folks here and I try to help them out right. especially during the winter time because they can't are, show are you, their sidewalks and all that stuff. are you not one of them the pensioner people I beg your pardon are you not one of the pensioner people now I, well, Ronnie, really, I mean, I, <laughs> I'm just wondering, I'm, actually, I'm, if I'm the Periscope people can hear, hear the phone call. Can you let me know, someone, if you can actually hear the phone call, Periscope people? Anyway, carry on, carry on. So anyhow, I, I decided that after last, we had a absolutely brutal winter here in the Northeast last year. I, right. I was going outside to, you know, clear sidewalks and things like that. Yes. Wearing what we call a snowmobile suit. All right. Uh, you, you just climb into the thing like a human-shaped sleeping bag and zip it up and put on your <laughs> ear and your goggles and all that stuff because the wind would tear you up. It, it was absolutely horrible. And the temperatures oh, I thought, were I thought you meant it, low. I thought you meant in your house for a minute. You weren't turning the heating on or something. Oh, well, I keep the temperatures down to around 63 or 64. I'm not going to pay for the heating. Forget right. it. Oh, you're, you're, you're so like me. 
You really I, are so like me. Carry on. I discovered that if, if I close the door in the room that I'm in right now with my computers and yeah. my studio equipment, that it stays very pleasant in here. When you open the door to walk out into the rest of the house, it's kind of like a good morning slap in the face. You yes. <laughs> other, other than that, um, so back to what I'm doing. I decided that because of the uh, number of people that need my help and the things that need to be done, it's humanly impossible for me to do it with just a shovel. It's yeah. not going to happen. So I'm, I'm going to invest in a, a nice John Deere tractor with a snowblower attached to the front of it so that in the wintertime I can go out and just start this device up and head off up and down the street and take care of their sidewalks and driveways and things like that. Some of the people have money so that they can pay me for my services, which is good because I should be able to make enough money off from them to pay for the equipment over the course of time. Yeah. So if I can render this public service and end up not costing myself anything out of pocket, then I figure it's a win. But uh, that, that, that's my public service, uh, you know, good well, that's, that, that sounds a nice thing to do, Wayne. So, yeah, so the rich, rich people are subsidizing the poor It also comes with people. a mower deck, so during, during the summertime when the snowblower is not attached, I can go out and, you know, mow some lawns and things like that. I, I like doing yard work and... And there are people that will pay me for doing that. So Well, do it then. Do it. Yeah. Absolutely do it. I, I was a little set back when I found out the cost of the equipment. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> hey, they're offering 0% <laughs> interest for four years. Who are? The people that sell the equipment. Well, go and get it then. I should do I, it then. It, if uh, you think, but do, do, do your groundwork first. You know, would you be interested if I, you know, kind of like that, really? Do you see what I mean? Yes, I've already been going around talking yes. to people. I, yes. I have potential customers lined up, so. Yes, yes. Well, nice to talk to you, Wayne. Okay, well, I'm, I'm glad that you're still alive and well over there. And, and I'm here. Don't you worry. I'll be here for a long time to come yet. One of these days when I make a few extra dollars off from the New York State Lottery or yes. Powerball or Mega Ball or yeah, yeah. ever, uh, or I'm if I get really them. desperate, I'll just you know start up my escort service again. I'll, I'll scrounge up <laughs> enough to, to cross the pond and just pop up at one of your shows. <laughs> I am going. I, I was pleased to find some of the music that I like to perform in, in your electronic songbook, but I, I will probably pre-record my yeah. own CDs and bring them along. So I'm with you. I'm with you. Good. Okay. Well, See you then. I'll I'll uh, turn control of this debacle back over to the person who's ultimately responsible for it that's me Cheerio. wish you all a, a pleasant day and uh, sorry for the tragedy in Nepal they lost a lot of historically significant buildings yes. and uh, many human lives from what I've been reading on the yeah. interweb so. yeah yeah. Our, our thoughts go out to them oh and one last thing I've never been in an what earthquake. is it with these ISIS people destroying these historically oh, significant yeah. monuments and buildings no, that's, I just don't get it that I'm not prone to violence, but I'm here to tell you. <laughs> I just don't get that at all. Shocking waste of history being destroyed, destroyed well, by them all at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, think back to World War II. Wasn't there some other infamous person who decided that uh, he was going to have his henchmen rewrite history by rearranging things to suit their uh, beliefs? That's right. That's right. Awful. Oh, man. All Awful. right. Well, on that happy note. I'm out of here. You folks enjoy the rest of your day. I've got a date with a red-headed nurse tonight. So, yeah, of uh, course you have. See you, Wayne. Uh, Bye-bye. I hope I, I hope I survived the encounter. <laughs> you might do. Cheerio, Wayne. There we are, Wayne on the line there. Uh, we've got some people watching. Good morning, Frank, on Periscope. How exciting. And apparently you can hear uh, the callers on Periscope, so that's good as well. Um, Love hearts are coming through as well. Now, let me just tell you about Periscope, and then we've got Anne uh, lined up to call in. <clears throat> Periscope is a new app I've discovered for the Apple iPhone. Also, I think it works on iPads and those uh, Mac computer things. It's an, IO, is it an iOS. Um, what do you call it? An iOS app. OK, it's an iOS app. I don't think it's available from Android uh, because Marge, I've been talking to Marge about it. 
And she said she was trying to get it to work, but couldn't. And then she says, I think I found a problem with Periscope. There is no Periscope like you're using in Android version. I think it's Periscope for iPhone only. So that would be a uh, iOS. So that's probably the reason for that. Thank you, Marge, uh, for letting us know there. Anyway, it's basically this thing for your iPhone. And you can literally broadcast by hitting a couple of buttons and your iPhone immediately goes on the air and whoever wants to watch can watch. And I've downloaded this myself. Uh, if you would like to add me as a friend, well, they're kind of called followers rather than friends. Uh, now, who's that there? Let me have a look. Frank is loving it. Frank, are you going to be doing your own shows? I do hope so. Frank is a very good friend of mine uh, who comes along to the city of Quebec uh, singing and Central Station. What time did you leave there last night, Frank, incidentally? And they kind of follow you. And whenever you start doing a show, everyone who's following you, as long as they've got the... Oh, what do you call that thing? Um, <clears throat> the information... Oh, God, I can't remember what they call it now. You know when you, you, do, you sign up something on the iPhone and if the app wants to send you something, you agree to have that happen. I can't remember what that's called now. Oh, gosh. Uh, anyone help me with that one? What's it called? No, I can't remember. Send you an alert. That's it. It's, thank you. Notifications or alerts. It sends you a notification or alert whenever that person starts doing a show. Yeah, push notifications, something like that. Thank you. Um, and it's It's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. So I could be out anywhere at all, and if I, I'll do a show now, click a couple of buttons, it goes on air. Anyone that's signed up to following you, as long as you've got the notification set to own, immediately gets a beep beep. I think it's a whistle, actually. I think it's a whistle. I can't remember. I think it's a whistle. And um, they see you doing a show, and they click, click a button, and you're there. It's absolutely fantastic. A brand new way of communicating. I love it. And I set this up a little while ago and you can do shows as long as you want or as short as you want. Most people, they do a few moments now and again, you know, a few minutes here and there, perhaps on a bus or whatever they're doing. Uh, last night at the karaoke, I started it at 10 o'clock and I left it running until two in the morning which is when we finished. We got extended last night. Um, I'm supposed to finish at one, but actually the, the karaoke I do on Fridays at Central Station in Kings Ross is going exceptionally well at the moment. So we got extended first to 1.30 and then to 2 o'clock. So we just carry on. Um, and we carried the show for the whole time. Now, I used the pub Wi-Fi in there because Periscope will use quite a lot of your, um, what do you call it, your minutes, your uh, your giga data bits <laughs> i don't know what they're called giga data bits or something like that all right so have a look on that if you've got an iphone an ipad or a mac computer periscope it's really good you don't have to do your own shows you could just use it to f watch other people i've done a few myself my my mate ron's got it uh, a friend of mine um uh uh mark He's got it. Anne's got it. Sean's got it. Lots of us have got this now. So it's just absolutely fantastic. Really, really good. So have a look at that one. Periscope, OK, available on the iOS. Now, other ways of uh, getting your money's worth. Gang, do you are you careful how you drive? You know, on and off the accelerator, nice and slowly. Um, do you... And are you uh, and you've got to call in on Skype or the phone, darling. I can't take calls on the Periscope. You can't call people on Periscope. That's the thing. You can't call in. But people can send you love hearts if they like you or maybe just what you're doing. You like click in the bottom left hand in the bottom right hand corner. You just tap the phone and little love hearts appear on the broadcaster's little screen in front of them. And it's fantastic. We've done a couple of bits <clears throat> of the show today on Periscope. I'm doing the Periscope now. Someone is actually sending me love hearts now, which is quite nice. There are only two people watching on Periscope, OK? Um, but the other people are watching on YouTube. But you, could have, you can have as many watchers as you want. Depends. Especially if you're young and good looking. Now, I know my nephew Jimmy, 
I mean, he's really grown up in the last... He's really good looking now. And I know if he did a YouTube show or a Periscope show, he would have hundreds of viewers very quickly. I know they would. He gets all these messages from girls now. I've seen them all. I've seen the messages from the girls going to um, uh, my nephew Jimmy. Hundreds and hundreds of messages. <laughs> and apparently he was at a nightclub last week and got chatted up by a group of gay lads as well. <laughs> Which he wasn't interested in. But I did tell him to give them my number. Unfortunately, I'm still waiting for the phone to ring at the moment. It's not happening. Um, Terry H says, I'm obsessed with my MPG on my car. Right, this is ways getting your most out of your money. Yeah, I am as well, Terry. I'm watching that all the time by miles per gallon. I am constantly watching that on all the time. Now, OK, we're going to talk to um, Anne in a second. All right, we're just going to talk to Anne in a second. I've lined her up there. Um, yeah, uh, so Terry says, I'm obsessed with my miles per gallon on my car. Got to get the most out of the diesel. I roughly get 60 miles per gallon out of my car. I'm the same. I've got a little computer. Have you probably got, I don't know what, what car have you got, Terry? I've got a little computer in the middle and it tells me roughly how many miles per gallon I'm getting and I'm on and off that accelerator. I've got to admit to you, Terry, um, it's since the the fuel went down. So I'm paying about, I think we're paying about 20, 25p a gallon less. Uh, uh, sorry, a, what is it now? A litre less um, since the prices came down quite considerably in January. They went up a bit. I think I'm paying about 20 pence a litre less. So it's 80 pence a gallon less than I was doing at the beginning of the year. So I have kind of taken my eye a little bit off the miles per gallon. I, I should keep an eye on that, really. Uh, good morning uh, to... Oh, Anne, do you want to just stop? I think you're, you're, you've got the stream running as well. I can't come to you. And you need to stop the stream if I'm going to talk to you, darling. Good morning, Chris. Can you hear me OK? Yeah, but I'm coming yeah, I'm, I'm coming back to myself. Have you got something else running? Uh, I was doing... I'm doing Periscope, so I've got people listening to us. And... That might be what it is. I don't know. Don't... But I'm echoing back. I can't take you until you shut that one down. Uh, oh, I could just ring you from my landline. Yeah, do that. Do that. Then it'll go out on both. That's good. All right? All right. So just hang up and I'll call Oh, yeah, because I'm only on another four minutes. Cool. Bye. All right, darling. There we are. We'll try and get a cold of Anne. Uh, good morning to Ben this morning, who says, Hi, Chris. I only just caught you. Had the doctor in this morning. Slipped a disc. Oh, God. Do you know, I've had a bad back and all today, Ben. Oh, no. Are you working tonight? Ben does karaoke. He filled in for me at the um, uh, quiz. <clears throat> at the quiz um, on Tuesday because I was unable to get to it, unfortunately. I had a flat tie if you watched any of the uh, 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 short videos that I did this 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 uh, uh, this week. So we'll just wait to Anne to call in. That'll be the last call today, OK? Uh, yeah, I hope you get all right, Ben. I really do. I've actually... Oh, Ron, I don't know if you're there. I've got an email from Mike here who's asked me to pop in a, a walk-in on Tuesday so he can have a look at my little problem that I've got there. But I think it's probably all right. I think I'm sure I've just pulled a muscle or something like that. Most annoying me. A uh, couple of messages here. One second. Uh, oh, good morning to Millie. She wasn't able to get through to us this morning. Yeah, it's been particularly busy today. A couple of phone calls and what have you call again. Morning, Millie. Uh, there you are, Anne. I've got you now. Good morning, Anne. Hello. Good morning, Chris. How are you doing? I'm um, very well. Thank you very much. Yeah, I've got Periscope on. I don't know if you've been chatting about it there because I had a little bit of a... Delay. I have indeed. Just a minute. Someone's just asked about the karaoke on Tuesday. Yes, I'm doing a karaoke on Tuesday. That's at the Golden Lion, Royal College Street in, in Camden. That's Tuesday night between 9pm and midnight this week. OK, so Golden Lion Karaoke. Uh, Royal College Street, Camden, Tuesday night at nine o'clock. Someone was just asking, yes. Hello, Anne. Yeah, hi there, Chris. How are you doing? Hello, Lewisham. You're sounding nice and bright today, darling. Oh, I'm always bright. I'm always oh, that, that bright. Is, uh, yes, I agree with you there. I totally <laughs> agree with you there, my darling, it's yes. My, my Irish heritage. I'm top of the morning, as always. Ah, well, you won't know then. The Golden Line is run by this wonderful little old Irish lady. She is, are you ready for this? Yeah. 80 years old. Wow, really? Her name is Mary, and she's, and she looks like, 
an old-fashioned pub landlady. She doesn't come downstairs until she's dressed up and got all the makeup on. She is wonderful. But don't think, because she's a little old lady, if you're going to cause trouble, because I've heard some things. I've heard some things where I've heard chucking people out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, she sounds a character. Yeah, I love the sound of it. What used to say, how do you get your money's worth out of what? Oh, I don't know, really. Well, like, <clears> take <throat> yesterday. I went to Asda's quite late in the evening, and they had some chickens reduced. So lovely cooked chickens, normally £6.50 each. Yes. Just happened to walk past at the, the right time, saw two chickens. The last two, they were reduced to £2.50. I don't know why. Big, fat, really large chickens. And, um succulent in the bag cooked i thought why they produce them it's only eight o'clock somebody will have them in seconds because it's a huge uh as does near me in charlton south right. london um put them in the basket got them home and then what my mum and i've done we've sort of carved them up we've had some chicken and then we carve it up and wrap it up in a little bit of foil and then you've got like little pieces of cooked chicken put them in the freezer and you've got little little sachets of frozen chicken. Take it out; it just defrosts in an so hour. So it lasts a while. I think they yeah. have a. I, have th I think they have a cut off point in in supermarkets where they start going around. Maybe chickens were the first thing on the list. I don't know, but they start going round, and you know, it's eight o'clock, right? Okay, if we've got any of this left or this left, let's get that out the door because it's always better for them to have something than nothing for an item. Yeah, They'd much rather get, sell it like that. People like to come in and they sort of look for it. You get a lot of workers. You see a lot of guys. <clears> of the day and yes. they're hungry and they want to <coughs> they go straight to the meat and they want to sort of see what what's there but you know it's it's good it's good i think yes indeed that, that that they there are people you know, um, who haven't got a lot of money and they know the times to go into the supermarket to find these deals going on that that's that's true that is i've seen that on the telly yeah but one of my, one of my um, naughty things is that i've had periods where i've gone in there and sometimes maybe in the cake section yeah. producing all the cakes and donuts and stuff and I've, I've come in and i've surprised my mum with like about 20 cakes and this is where my diet started going wrong because cakes. i'm coming in with a rhubarb cakes. And a for 20p, <laughs> or cakes. A for 20p and a load of donut and you sort of think where can i put it i need a big freezer yeah I, I mean it's ridiculous but i've cut that out now and that's the temptation with bargains and then the diet is gone because you come home and you're eating Bye, something Frank. like tex-mex food at nine o'clock at night you think well i wouldn't have bought it yeah. if it was six pounds but because it's gone down to a pound oh i'll try a bit of that you know and me that that's uh. not good either <laughs> you know you know because I'm, I'm there with you on the diet i'm back on the diet i've good had girl. laryngitis i've had a, a, a really bad cold for about 10 days and i've lost about six pounds so yeah. i'm back on the diet with you with you with you chris so Good girl. The best way. Get ill and then your, your diet will... And it's, 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 it's so hard. And, you know, I think you're the same as me. You know, you were losing a bit of weight and it went down and down. And, you, sh you know, I, I show my... Um uh, scowl things on, on, on Facebook sometimes, yeah. you know. Um, but... And, and we get that. And you take your eye off it <laughs> just for a couple of weeks and yeah. bang, it's back again. Yeah. It's just so difficult. And... <laughs> I, I, I don't think you're, I don't think you're, a per you correct me if I'm wrong here, I reckon you're not a person who will have breakfast in the morning and then the way to the, sh and then you do your bit of shopping, perhaps, and then, oh, I'll just have a pasty while I'm out, and then you stop and get a bag of crisps, then you have your lunch, and then you think, I'll have some biscuits this afternoon. I don't think you're one of those persons, are you? No, do you know what, Chris? No, so why are we putting on the weight then? I don't get it's, it. Because it's our age. I'm 47. <laughs> it's the metabolism just creeping up. But yeah. I don't buy Chris. I don't really buy stuff, but I don't do enough. I used to play badminton a lot. I used right. to run around all over London. I used to be a children's nanny, and I used to be with kids all the time, in parks all the time, walking everywhere. And you just, I think you just become a bit more sedentary. Plus the internet age is here. We're all slowing down that little bit more. Our, our brains are going on full flow, but I think our bodies are just, you know, you, you just have to um, cut out the calories bit by bit. Each year, apparently, we do put on about an extra 10 pounds. And by the time we are 50, 55 plus, it's really cracked in. But the other issue that's very worrying, and my mother's got a blocked artery herself, uh. is this build-up of fat in the arteries. So... I cooked some sausages the other day, and the amount of fat yeah. that left in the grill. Are you? Yeah. I'm not well, yeah, but but anymore. but you grilled them, so that fat that you would have eaten 
if you'd have fried them, has yeah. come out. So that must be better for things like that, grilling things. Yeah, they really it's were good quality be. sausages. They were really good. But it, my mother bought them, and they were a bargain. She bought like this big, and she was thinking of barbecues. And I, I cut out sausages and meat. I, I'll only go for white meat. Yeah. You can't go wrong with white meat, chicken, turkey, because they're so low in saturated fat, and it's that that's killing, killing well, the nation with the well, arteries. I remember when I used to eat meat, if I had grilled a chicken breast, right, there would be no fat in the bottom. Absolutely no. none whatsoever. So it, 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 it must be. Um, yeah. You were saying there about, you know, our brains are going all the time. Now, yeah. I think... And that's really important. Now, you know how busy I am. I mean, it, certainly in the last, I don't know, in the last three or four weeks, I seem to be have become incredibly busy, not doing just one thing, lots of things. I don't know how this has happened, but I have. But I think that's really important for your, for your brain because a lot of people, they retire and then they... What's the word? They, they, a modern word, veg out in front yeah. of the telly and then they get Alzheimer's or um, some other, you know, unfortunate disease like that. I, I don't know if it's classed as, is that classed as a disease? Alzheimer's? I don't know. Or memory yeah. loss. And I, I believe that's because they're not using their brains. So, you know, you've got to keep doing something, something, what, whatever you like doing. Yeah, no, even I, think, if it's... I think I think getting up to fifty, fifty-five onwards is a pivotal age. But I think the internet will keep people young for those that are interested in it. It's never too late to start. I say to everybody because it, there's so much out there for everyone. But having an interest in things and being open to new possibilities, like the periscope. I was actually thinking this morning this mm. ought to be something that a lot of elderly people try and get onto. Yeah, yeah. If they can stay up with things, because they'll never be lonely. There's a crisis in the UK with loneliness. The yeah. pensioners and the elderly. I mean, as as we get older ourselves, I mean, people have got to stay more connected. I mean, it's absolutely critical for people's mental health. So, you know, if you if you can get online, there's a whole world of opportunities out there for all sorts of things in life. So, I think it's as you say, you're spot on there. You've got to keep your brain going. It's your B vitamins. You've got to have B vitamins as well because the brain does get quite tired. And well, you, you are very busy. You're one of the busiest people in London, Chris. I mean, you what really, are those? Really are. What are those B vitamins? Oh, you mean taking vitamin tablets? Well, you get B vitamins, but a lot of people do need them. They are the thing that keep you mentally... Is it a tablet? Are you talking uh, tablets? Yeah, I mean, you can get them in multivitamins, but I think you yeah, get them in see, like I... Bovril. Is it Marmite? And, I, don't, uh... I don't go along with all those. I think you need to eat properly. Yeah, uh, I don't, I, 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 The only vitamin tablets I really took were those orange... Or, what are they called? Halibo. Halib? Halib? Halib orange, yeah, yeah, or something like that. Uh, as a child, then I, I did do multivitamins for a while, and I thought, oh, I don't know about this, you know. And then, of course, you might have seen a couple of years ago an article in the paper that actually taking too many vitamins is bad for you. Yeah, definitely. And also, even if you take the right amount, those people taking vitamins didn't live any longer than the people that were. Yeah. So I, think, I don't know I think about you've that. You've got to have a very balanced diet, but in Correct. London, Food. Yeah. in London, apparently there are tons of debris dumped down over London with the airplanes every yeah. day. So I've been on some health talks, and some of the health gurus say you can't go wrong to have like a multivitamin if you're living in a very toxic city. There's a lot of lead in London, as you can imagine, a lot of pollution. And I'm near City Airport, London, right in the heart of it. You can't go wrong, but I think yeah, have a balanced diet. Um, listen to your body. Uh, you know, do you ever get cravings for something like steak or meat? And you think, you know, no. I haven't had steak for months uh, and months. Uh, chop, uh, cheese and onion crisps, walkers. Oh, and... you're vegetarian, aren't you? Yeah, and yeah. and chocolate. <laughs> And chocolate. No, Jeez. Chris, you've got to cut them out. I have. You good. just uh, you just asked if I got cravings. Well, yeah, yes, okay, got cheese cravings, and onion. Yeah. Oh no, there's three things. Okay, yeah. cheese and onion crisps, uh, crisp chocolate. Do you know what the other thing is? I'll give you a clue. You don't eat it. Oh, your ice cream. You like your ice cream? Don't no, you? You no, like lollies? no, no. Tea, oh. tea. I'm really? dreadful with tea. Yeah, I can be out somewhere and say, oh, no, no, I, I'm desperate for a cup of tea. Desperate. <laughs> I do know that feeling, trust me. <laughs> I really do know that feeling. Do you, like the, do you like the red blazer today, Anne? Do you like Oh, that? I do. I do. I thought you looked a little bit like a grounds 
foreman for bowling a little bit. <laughs> and, and then I liked the school time, and I thought, Belushi, it's got to be a 60s night or school, school disco, was it? Yeah, I thought, no, don't wear the white shoes. But I, I just knew when you got those, when you stood up, you were going to be in track suit as well. I thought, you've, you've let me down, Chris. Let well, what's down. the point in putting trousers on as well, you know? Yeah, but I you can't see that bit. I think bit. it's really good. I think Jonathan Ross would do it. Graham Norton would do it. David Dimbleby would have done it. You've got to give us a point. Oh, God, leave it out. Are you coming down? Will you be at the cherry tree tomorrow? No. <laughs> You're not coming? You didn't enjoy it? Oh, no, it's great. It's great. Yeah, no, no. No more karaoke. I've still got laryngitis, Chris. Oh, yeah, so, um, yeah, I can hear it in your voice, actually. Yeah, it's been hard to get rid of, to be honest. It's, it's this funny old weather. Are you supposed it? to talk less, or doesn't it make any difference? I don't I think it makes any difference. I've been ringing in now. I've been on bloody Periscope for the last four days. <laughs> 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 Would you like to tell people what your Periscope username is in case they want to follow you? Oh, yes, I'm quite famous already on it. Thank you very much, Christopher. Yes, everybody, it's Anna. I'm on Twitter. It's at Toffee Unicorn. Don't ask me why I called it that. I went on Twitter about six years ago, and that was the first thing I thought, mm, it's quite sweet, no one will know me. I'll never use this thing. I feel like a, like a 12-year-old. <laughs> I just put it up. Never used it for six years, and then I started helping a friend out. So I started tweeting. Well... And then... Um, but yeah, that, that, I'm on the it, only, and it's really fabulous. I love the only it. thing is, you know, you've obviously got a nickname on there, Toffee Unicorn, and yeah. that, as indeed of most people. And when you get so many of them, you can't remember who's who. You know, it doesn't say no, Toffee Unicorn is Anne. And, you, you know, there's a, there's a couple of things I'd do to that Periscope. Number one, I would like to be able to rename your name to something that I know. Yeah. So I don't, I'm not actually renaming you, but when you come up, instead of it saying Toffee Unicorn, like Anne in Lewisham, yeah. I'd like that to happen. Now, what, there was a, something else as well I wanted them to do. Um, oh, I can't let me remember now. There was, there, there, there was another thing that I, I mean, thought... Is, do you know it's only... A oh, yeah, that's it. Through. No, no, that's it. The search... You know, that yeah. the search isn't very... You, uh, you've you really got to look for the search. And if you type in, I don't know, London or something like that, that, that might it won't necessarily bring you up. No. Do you know what I mean? You can... I, I heard a tip from a fellow user the other day. Yes. Um, let me see. Is it Mark Shaw or someone called Alex? Basically, in that search button, you can type in anything. So say you're looking for a DJ, All type right. in two or three words. It's not just for the username of a person. Ah. You can type in anything. So if you've got a hobby of horses or you, you you want to connect with DJs in London, type that in. Accountant, type in, you know, ice cream, whatever you, you're interested, type in something I else. understand, yes. Yeah, it's not just the username, which a lot of us, we, we didn't realise that. But it is only a month old and it right. isn't on Android yet. So apparently a billion people will go on to it, apparently when they get the Android app, which is coming. So at the moment, it's very early days. So there's no Android yet? There's no Android No. At all, well, right? I'm, I'm glad we're in this at the beginning. My yeah. guess is they're probably charged for the app at some point because it's, it's immensely popular already. Yeah. But um, often, if you're in early, then we've got it for free, you know. And, yeah. if, and then sometimes they start and then they might bring in a charge. But because we're, we, we've got it already, often you're in it for free. I wonder how they make any money. How do they make money? There's no ads. Well, Twitter have bought that app for about 100 million. Someone was telling me we were all inquiring. There's quite a little gathering. There's quite a Periscope family building up and a lot of us are all new and we're all sharing little bits of information. Right. But it's been bought by Twitter, so they will make money from it because as soon as you say the word Periscope, everyone's going to know about it. Uh, Ellen DeGeneres is on it in America. Big names, football stars, the TV right. shows are using it. it, it it's going to get known, isn't it? I mean, Twitter, they've got all that sussed out, I'm sure. Isn't it but, interesting how we're moving away from the mainstream broadcasting now? Yeah, yeah. Sad, in a way, but... But don't you, you know, think broadcasting on TV is so predictable now? It's tired. It's almost mo had its day. We need this live streaming. This live streaming, it's just wonderful. It's really... Mm -hmm. it, and it's going to the people. What the you've done... person. It, yes. What you've done, what's happening is that the power is being taken away by these TV execs, you know, yeah. sitting there saying, yeah, well, you're good. You're... No, we don't want you. We want you. Well, you're... And these people get hundreds of thousands of pounds, Right. But anyone now who wants to do a little... I mean, I've been doing it for a while, but, you know, I mean, I've probably got, a, you know, a bigger setup than most people. 
But now, with it going on something like an iPhone, all they have to do is push a couple of buttons and bang, you're on air. You're Absolutely. doing your own show. And there's hundreds of people. Some are good, some are bad. Doesn't matter. If you want to do it, you yeah. haven't got to talk to some bloody TV exec. You just go and do it. Of course, this has already happened with music. Already happened with music, you know, where people, are, they, they, they make their songs right, and they go straight to iTunes. Now, the difficulty Absolutely. is getting your name out. Say, so I've got yeah. this tune. Will you please buy it? Yeah. You know? Well, I think, I think it has so much potential because, yes, you can stream events, you can promote your music and your hobbies and interests. And, mm. But I think, I think it can have a, it's going to have a oh, message. Just, like fallen Twitter, down. <laughs> just like Twitter in its early days. Uh, you know, when people were using it and they were in Syria, they were in Egypt, yeah. there was all the, uh, the, the wars were kicking off yeah. and people were able to show accurate, authentic footage. I think it will be the same with Periscope. It will suddenly build and build. And I think it's fantastic. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Did you manage to catch any of the karaoke at all last night? I did. Oh, I you did. did. I saw the, uh, the gentleman that wears the colourful um, cloak. That's George. Yeah, and, and another gentleman as well. How was the quality of that? Was it all right? Did it, it drop? Right. A f- yeah, I just thought, um, yeah, make sure you come back on, give us a hello. And but then I thought it's interesting because I was like watching all week how people are using it, and yeah. you know, you do want the person who's on yeah. it to actually. I've remembered. You. I've remembered. The other thing I'd like Periscope to do is to be able to turn the phone around so it's sideways rather than top to bottom. If you see what I mean. Oh yeah. Phone yeah, because if you go sideways, it, 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 it doesn't work, does it? Oh, it does, or does it? Um, yes, it does, but your messages will then come up from the side, so they yeah. won't be uh, straight, horizontal, vertical, horizontal. So the messages won't come up horizontal; they will come up from yeah. the side. Now, have you got still got your iPhone? Are you watching on? Yeah. No, you're on Periscope, aren't you? You're broadcasting. I'm actually on Periscope right now, right, and okay. I've got some people. I've got some people yeah. listening to me. Yeah. But it's so you hear me? Let's see. So. Yeah, I've got one. Now I should have. Oh, now, now that I think about it, I should have done that with the karaoke last night. If I'd have turned the phone the other way, because obviously, you know, we couldn't message back and forth. When I've got set the set the phone up, set the camera up, the phone, camera phone, you know, and leave it. I can't re- respond to any messages that are coming no. up. But even no. if I could, they are coming up from the left, yeah. so that they're, they're they're the messages are coming up on the side. You, do you know what I mean? Do yeah, you know what I'm so saying? Coming here? up on the side, and you give your love and hearts on the right. But, yes. No, on, but they're on the left. Of, well, but I oh. think it is, it, is, it is an app that's going to yeah. want interaction. That is yes. a two way yes. relationship yes. with the audience. People are not going to write messages yes. and then it fall on deaf ears. That's definitely the thing. But I think it's just a useful thing for people who can't get to your shows or um, but getting inspired, building up confidence. I mean, there was a chap yesterday, I shared your broadcast to about 70 people, and right. I think this guy called Cox Sparrow, who lived in Muswell Hill, right. um, you were interacting with, I think that's when you were in the hairdressers. That's right, yeah. And uh, yeah, I just yeah. thought, wow, so somebody could see your show, they can get a feel for it, there might be people that have never been to sort of uh, like a gay night club or something, they build up a relationship and come down. Yeah, I mean, there's, yeah. Neat, there's a lot of Londoners on the Oh, it's great. Gap. I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah, it's wicked. <laughs> Good. All right, then, Anne. It's nice to talk to you, darling. Yeah, you too, Chris. Have a great... What are you doing this afternoon? Anything Hope your throat your gets vibe? better. Well, what I do now is uh, I, I finish the show now and then I go and put my dinner in the oven and I come up here, edit it and put it all back together again and Fantastic. send it up. And how's your bike going? Your bike all right? We're bike, missing all, all the bike trip. It's all fixed. It's all fixed. Fantastic. I took it down an independent shop, got it done a lot cheaper. Oh, I know. And the car saga, oh, my God, I, I was there with you. I'm so sorry to oh, hear that you missed your Mayflower. Ah, uh, yes. So the car saga, yeah, I didn't get to the last night. Um, and you know that Toyota, they wanted oh. another £41 for another bottle of this stuff. Well, I went to Halfords and got two bottles for 10 quid. No way. Yes. Unbelievable. Two bottles for 10 quid of this. So there you go. You're back to your original story, Chris, how you have saved money. There wow. you are, darling. See you soon, Anne. See you.
See you, Chris. Bye bye. Everyone, bye bye. There we are, Anne in Lewisham. She's lovely. She is. She really is. Right, that's it today, boys and girls. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, the email address, if you want to send in an email at any point during the week, is Chris at UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk. Chris at UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk. Get Periscope on your iPhone. Add me on there if you want to. Okay, it's Chris Reardon UK. My username. I did. I after I set that username, I thought to myself, oh, I should have done United Kingdom Talk, and I tried. I don't seem to be able to cancel that one and change it. So that's how it is, OK? Periscope username, Chris Reardon, UK. Have a lovely Saturday, boys and girls. I'm DJing tonight at Rainbows in Coventry. If you're around the area, pop in and say hello. Thanks very much for watching and listening. Bye-bye.